Hi, I'm Jerry James Stone. I'm here with Cooking Stone, and we have Ashley Routston, who's probably best known as the Beer Wench on Twitter. Welcome, Ashley. Thank you. And thanks for coming and hanging out in my kitchen with Dude, me. I'm so excited. <laughs> Ashley, so what are we making today? Oh, we are making a strawberry blonde brujito. Brujito? Yes. So it's obviously inspired by the mojito. Of course. Of course. Okay, what's in this one? Fresh muddled strawberries, fresh whole leaf mints. We got some citrus, a little bit of agave sweetness, rum, obviously, because it's a mojito. Right. And then I'm using a blonde ale. Tell us about the blonde ale that you're using. I'm using a blonde ale from Knee Deep Brewing. They're out of Sacramento. It's a beautiful blonde. Uh, the blonde ale is often referred to as the gateway beer to craft beer because <laughs> it is the lightest of the styles. It has virtually no hop presence in it. Um, the malts are very neutral as well. They're mostly pale malt with a little bit of biscuit, so you don't have a lot of caramel flavors. You don't have a lot of dark, roasty flavors. Across the board, it's very clean. It's very easy and approachable. It's a great summertime drink, especially by the beach. So a lot of the lighter blonde ales are, are made in cans as well. Okay. Um, I use this because we really wanted to showcase the strawberries, so we didn't want to interfere with it. But uh, typical in a mojito is to use soda water. So anywhere you can use soda water, in my book, you can use beer. And so I needed to use one of the most neutral styles of beer, um, but still give it a little bit of flavor. And so I chose the beautiful blonde. Which kind of matches your locks there. <laughs> is it, now where does this particular blonde fall as far as the spectrum of things? Is it common for them to have fruit flavors? Or are they pretty... It's not characteristic to have fruit flavors in this beer. Um, fruit flavors oftentimes in beer come from the yeast, and the yeast used in this because it's an American style. Um, Americans pretty much invented the American blonde ale, well, <laughs> obviously. Um, but uh, the, the yeast strands used in this are American yeast strands, which typically aren't very fruity, and you won't find any fruit from any of the malts. So you're going to find a little bit of biscuit flavor, which will be nice to go with the strawberries, maybe a little strawberry shortcake with mint on top. Can you talk a little bit about when you're concocting a, a recipe for this, you can have either, you know, sort of inspiration from the culinary world, whether it's like mm -hmm. basil or strawberry or even some other dish, or you can start with the beer. If someone starts with the beer, how do you work towards building out a cocktail? What's your sort of process for that? Well, I would, if you have a favorite style, I would break down the key flavor characteristics of that. And for example, we'll use a stout. You know, we've got chocolate, we've got coffee. Is it lighter in body or is it heavier in body? All these things that you have to think about. And then you take those flavors and you think about what spirits might, might play well with that. I have chocolate and I have espresso. Uh, typically you go towards barrel aged spirits such as whiskey, bourbon, the darker rums. Um, so, and then you start figuring out, well, I like the caramelized flavors and the vanilla flavors in the barrel that that play very well with the um, chocolate and espresso and the stout. And then from there, you can just throw in other ingredients. Sometimes orange goes really nicely with both because orange right. and chocolate, fruit and chocolate and bourbon. You know, so it's just kind of going through it in your head. Wherever you start, you can build off of it. So. And where can we find more of your recipes? Beermixology.com. Great, thank you.